I have a, a tip for you for marketing, for selling, for whatever. And this is going to help you. It's going to help you understand why people behave the way that they do, why people, why, why your market responds the way that they do, why, um, why actually it probably helps you even more to understand why they don't respond when you expect them to respond. And this tip for you, this tip for you is to expect your rationality, to expect people not to be logical, to expect them to behave in completely crazy and ridiculous and unpredictable ways. And, um, you know, I, I want to stay away from what's going on politically this week. I certainly have views about that and how crazy uh, things are. But I want to talk about something in, uh, in, in finances. Now, um, you may or may not know that Bitcoin is going vertical again. And way back in December of 2017, the last time Bitcoin was going vertical and the price was very quickly approaching uh, $20,000 per Bitcoin, I actually posted in a, uh, in a Facebook group of financial copywriters and I basically said, this can't go on forever. Uh, and people treated me like I was absolutely crazy. Uh, people treated me like Bitcoin is the the new thing. It's gonna, it's headed for the stratosphere. It's going to be, you know, it's going to take over the entire world financial market and whatever, whatever, whatever. And I, I actually, they said, well, how much is it actually worth? Like, what's the price actually going to be? And I said that I had read a believable analysis that uh, that that the price could fall to anywhere from a thousand to two thousand dollars, and it was at twenty thousand dollars at the time, and. All these Bitcoin zealots who were in that group called me, you know, absolutely crazy. Uh, they they thought I was off my rocker for saying that. And it was actually less than 10 days before the price of Bitcoin did peak right around $20,000 and then fell to just over $3,000. So I was wrong, right? But I would much rather be on, on uh, the, the side of that bet that I was on than the side of the bet that they were on. And it's going on again. Bitcoin today, um, it, like in the last in the last uh, couple months, it's gone from a little over ten thousand dollars to today it's crossed forty thousand uh, dollars. So it's multiplied by almost four times in um, in in just a couple months. And it's incredible. Like if you're sitting on huge gains in Bitcoin, congratulations! Like that's awesome. What I will say is that this will not go on forever. And like I was feeling in December of, uh, of 2017, right before it cratered, you should expect that this is gonna end soon. I mean, as soon as the price of any asset starts to go vertical, it's gonna end soon. And you're probably better taking out uh, before the peak than after, even if you miss out on some gains that, that could still happen in the next few weeks prices of assets don't go up vertically and then plateau or come down, you know, slowly. Uh, but no matter what I say about this, anybody who is a Bitcoin zealot right now is not going to believe me. They're going to call me crazy. And it's going to be just like in December 2017 when I when I was saying the same thing about the price of Bitcoin. Um, and I know this because you know, for the last 10 years, I've made my living not by understanding how investors and people who gamble and uh, speculate on stocks and other investments should behave, but I have made my living uh, by understanding how they actually do behave. And, um, and I, can't, I can't sell an investment newsletter by speaking to how people do behave. I can't sell a financial trading product, or I'm sorry, I can't, I can't sell it based on how I believe people should behave. The reality is that people should behave like completely, completely rationally. They should, they should uh, adopt very like, um, they should adopt very conservative 
strategies for just setting aside as much money as possible and putting it in diversified and and fairly safe growth assets and they shouldn't chase these big wins with the exception of okay maybe i have a little bit of money set aside um that that I, if i lose it all that's fine but i can chase big gains with that if it's it, it's like play money right but the reality is that a lot of people, as soon as they see assets going up, and I can speak from my own personal experience here, they get excited. They get excited and they just keep pouring money in and keep pouring money in and they feel like they are right. They feel like they are right. And that, that asset keeps going up and keeps going up and they become, the higher it goes, the more invested they become. And the completely rational thing to do at that point would be to pull the money out. Or at the very least, throw a stop order under it so whenever it falls by 10 percent 20 percent whatever it is that it all gets sold and you get the cash now in a very volatile market uh you know you may not actually sell it 10 percent down you may sell it 20 percent down just because that's how fast the order gets filled but um the reality is people are not going to behave in those rational ways and there's going to be a lot of people who are getting excited about Bitcoin now because it's gone up by three, four times and they think it's just going to keep going up forever. The the people who make the case that Bitcoin should be worth a hundred thousand dollars or 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 you know a million dollars or whatever, you know, maybe maybe in the long run they're right. Like if it gets accepted as a world currency and whatever, whatever. But in the short term, the reality is the price is going to crater. And they're going to sell long before it ever reaches that height. When I was saying that Bitcoin could fall to a thousand or two thousand dollars, I wasn't saying that it's never going to come back. I was just saying that the, the the price action in recent history was unsustainable, and that's what's going on now. Now, uh, how does this apply to marketing and 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 so on? Well. Um, for one thing, like as as marketers, as salespeople, as business people, we want to believe that our market, our audience, our customers are rational. And like the entire field of economics is based on all these models of how a rational consumer is going to behave, how a rational investor is going to behave. But the reality is that the vast majority of investors, the vast majority of consumers are completely irrational. They just do what feels good now. And they do what feels good based on looking in the rear view mirror for their most recent experience. So their most recent experience is the market's going up, they're gonna pour money in. Even if if like every bit of rationality says it can't go up forever, they're gonna say, well, it's going up right now. And it feels good to invest in something that's going up right now. And so they're gonna pour money in. And um, as a as a marketer, you know, your industry, your uh, your market, your uh, topics are full of, of their own quirks of humanity and human psychology like this. I, I remember um, yeah, there's a really good book on poker called uh, Mike Caro's Book of Poker Tells, C-A-R-O. And one of the things that he says there is that people do like unless somebody trains themselves to behave otherwise, they will do and say and behave the opposite of what is actually true. And so if they have a weak hand, they're going to play it strong. If they have a strong hand, they're going to play it weak. And the same thing applies here in investing. Like you'll get the people, you'll get people who are saying, um, you know, I'm a completely conservative investor, but then they're they, they're they're afraid they're going to miss out on the Bitcoin mania, and so they start pouring all their money into Bitcoin, right? Versus somebody who says, "Oh yeah, I I do like to speculate," and they probably have that like five percent gambling strategy where ninety five percent of their investments are in safe investments, and five percent are you know just whatever moonshot they want to go for, um, and people will often do. The exact opposite of what they say, and in in uh, another good example of this is is like the use of video sales letters or long copy. People say, "Oh, you know, who would read all of that long copy, or who would watch this hour long video sales letter selling them whatever product?" And the reality is, like, once those people get in the privacy of their own home. And they're just clicking around the internet and they land on one of these and it actually happens to be a really relevant product or service or message to them. Well, suddenly 
they're forgetting about the fact that nobody nobody responds to these video sales letters and instead they're completely engrossed in the message because it's what feels right in the moment and so you know in in marketing and selling your job i mean it kind of sucks like i i want to believe that i'm a rational person right um, and so I think that my job should be to give people rational solutions, right? And to show them how a solution is rational. But the reality is people don't respond to that. People respond to the irrational. People respond to what feels good. And so your job, if you actually want to, even it, like even if your product gives them the rational solution, you still have to sell them what they want, which is whatever feels right in the moment. You have to sell them whatever feels right in the moment. And then it's it's great if your product like fulfills on the whole rational thing and is backed up. And it, really, you shouldn't be selling the product if it doesn't. But coming up with a rational solution and explaining why this is the rational solution is not going to get you those sales. You have to assume that people are going to behave in rational ways. They're going to respond to irrational messages. Uh, people people just, they don't. They respond not to logic, um, not to thoughtfulness, not to any of that. They respond to what feels good. And so you have to make them uh, feel good and you have to make them understand that responding will make them feel good. And, uh, and, and when you're able to do that, when you're able to give them the opportunity to feel good through your product or service. Um, not in a rational way, but in an irrational way that's just based on like emotions and gut feeling, then that's when you're most likely to get response. So my name is Roy Fur. This has been a video issue of Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. It's a little bit of a riff, but I hope that you found it valuable. I'd love it if you'd leave a comment below. Let me know how valuable you found it on a scale of one to ten, and why. Like, what's your big, what's your big takeaway? What's your, what's your action item? What, what is it that you found most valuable about this? Also, click that like button before you go, so you get more content like this delivered to you. And so the magical algorithms of the internet know to share it with more people like you who will find it valuable. You can certainly share it with folks directly and subscribe before you go. You can subscribe here. Also, uh, there's a link in the description to BreakthroughMarketingSecrets.com where you can get my daily emails Monday through Friday, including these videos and exclusive content for email subscribers. My name is Roy Fur. Again, this is a video issue of Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. I always aim for that 10 out of 10 value. I hope that I've delivered it here and I look forward to seeing you again in your next video issue. I'll see you soon. Bye.